Hello YouTube family, welcome back to my channel. I am Tia Latrice and as always, I am so happy to have you here. If you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're notified each and every time I upload new content. All right guys, so I came across this beautiful artwork on the Neiman Marcus site. As you can see, it's $745. So of course, I'm gonna show you how I got this same look for less. Okay, so I started with two canvases, one that was 12 by 24 inches and another that was 18 by 24 inches. I got these both from Hobby Lobby out of the value pack, so they equaled about $9 for the two. I also used this all-purpose joint compound. I used this in a previous DIY and I just used what I had left over. I also used a comb. I made sure to use one that had two different sized teeth and I also used this putty knife. To begin, you're going to take your putty knife and apply the joint compound to the canvas. You're going to want to at least try to get a light coverage on the entire surface of the canvas. If you miss a couple of spots, it's okay for the intended purpose that we're going for, but you do want to try to get it at least on the majority of your canvas. Okay, so once you have a nice even coating of the joint compound on your canvas, you're going to want to go ahead and grab your comb. Now with the comb, you're going to position that right in the middle of your canvas. You're going to hold it firmly at one end and then pivot it around the canvas. This is going to give you a nice even base um, to start the center of your piece. Now for the, uh, the edges around the center, you're gonna have to kind of drag your comb across. Try to keep your hand as steady as possible. Uh, in retrospect, I probably, if I do this again, I would do it on something like a Lazy Susan or something like that where I can keep a nice steady, um, stream or streak with the comb, but it doesn't have to be super perfect. I mean, the comb is gonna do the majority of the work for you. You just have to try to keep your hand as steady as possible. And then of course, you're just going to repeat that same process on the opposite side, but you're gonna do it in the reverse. So you're gonna have it so that your uh, semicircles are facing each other. So if you were to put it together, it kind of looks like um, a bunch of circles. And um, if you have it separately, obviously it just looks like they're um, semicircles that are kind of facing the opposite way. So guys, looking at this part here, as you can see, again, the middle part is the very, the easiest part. Now that drag across is a little bit difficult. Um, and if you're a perfectionist, you're probably gonna find yourself doing this quite a few times to get it exactly how you want. Um, what I found myself doing was just adding a little bit of additional joint compound to those areas that didn't really look um, as clean as I wanted them to. And then I just went back over that with the comb. So you're always able to do that. Um, and then that'll give you a little bit more of a clean look. Um, and again, these don't have to be perfect. It's totally up to your personal preference, just like anything else that I show you guys how, um, how to do. Everything is just based on what is visually appealing to you. So if you're satisfied with it, that is really all that matters. Thank you. 
Now that both of these pieces are done, I went ahead and let those dry overnight. And then I just came in with the paint to go on top. So I just used some regular acrylic paint, all purpose paint. On the smaller panel, I did black. On the larger panel, I did gold. You are, of course, able to do whatever color works best for your color scheme. Um, I did kind of want to get it a little close to the original piece because I am putting this in my office where my color scheme is black and gold. Um, one thing I thought was really cool when I was painting this um, was that if you really, you could probably just do this with like a dry brush, not necessarily apply the, um, paint directly to the canvas but you could do this with a dry brush and then kind of have the background still highlighting a lot of that white and then just have your paint uh, just kind of on the elevated surfaces of the canvas where the texture is um, I think that would be a really cool effect also maybe I'll do something like that um, in the future but um, I found that to get the best coverage, to have no white showing, I did have to apply the paint directly to the canvas. And I used a sponge brush and kind of just um, brushed along the same um, lines or patterns as the, uh, the design or the texture of the canvas now that I have the joint compound on it. Um, and then I just went back in after the fact to make sure that I hadn't missed any areas. I was almost running out of black paint, so that's kind of why you see me struggling a little bit. But um, if you start with the fresh bottle, it's more than enough. If you have one of those little small, uh, like 50 cent bottles like they use, or like they sell at um, Walmart or Dollar Tree, um, you can definitely get this entire canvas painted with no problem.
When you're done painting both canvases, make sure that you allow them time to dry. I think I gave them a couple of hours. And then on top of that, I just went back in with a high shine sealant. I used this one by Mod Podge, so I'll show that to you in just a moment. But I just sprayed that uh, lightly over both of these canvases once the paint was completely dry. And that's gonna give you that super high shine, kind of like the original piece. And here we are with our finished product. Definitely not perfect by any means, but I am very pleased with the way that this turned out. I love that it's not uh, just one dimensional. I love that all of the streaks are not the same size. Uh, if you're going for something where all of the streaks are um, symmetrical or similar to one another, you may want to use a different type of comb. But ultimately, this is the look that I was going for. And I don't know, I think I did a pretty